live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. First tonight, new data has revealed an alarming rate of Tasmanian students have been suspended across public schools. There are calls for more protections for children living with a disability. Some warning current measures don't go far enough. Kristen Desmond knows all too well the challenges children with disability face while learning. The mum of three children on the autism spectrum says vulnerable students can be a target for schoolyard bullies. Kids with disability, we know based on research, are more likely to be bullied than not. According to the Education Department, 2,200 children were suspended for physically abusing another student in the past year alone, and the number of suspensions jumped by 1,600 in the same period. But Kristen says that data doesn't go far enough. The government doesn't keep at a system level the number of students with disability who are suspended or the number of students with trauma who are suspended or who are the victims of that kind of abuse. Perhaps there are stresses in our lives that are coming out now we're reaching the end, hopefully the end of the pandemic. So uh, if we can do more, we will certainly do more. The Education Minister says the proportion of students suspended for bullying, physical harassment and stalking has decreased in recent years and heightened awareness of student safety may be a reason for increased reporting between schools. Well, there have been three Education Ministers this year. I would like to see the new Education Minister take this issue on and provide a safe and nurturing environment in every school in Tasmania. Roger Yench says schools are required to implement the department's Respectful Relationships program to help make schools safer for everyone. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Well, Peter Gutwin has joined a chorus of state premiers calling on Scott Morrison to help bring down the cost of fuel to support working families through a temporary reduction in the national fuel excise, which currently sits at more than 44 cents a litre. What we really want to see is a reflection on the pricing, the build-up of the pricing, which includes the, the fuel excise uh, that the federal government controls, and for those levers to be moved for the benefit of the consumer. Tasmanians are currently paying upwards of $2.20 at the Bowser, with prices expected to jump even higher due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Tasmania's COVID case numbers continue to fall following a recent spike. The state recorded 923 new infections overnight as three people remain in ICU. It comes as vaccination rates for the 5 to 11 age group lag, despite a government push. A number of secondary and primary classrooms are currently experiencing outbreaks. I know as a busy working mum that daily life gets in, in the way of doing things, but it's really important that we prioritise children, we prioritise vaccination and make sure we get to it. Young people have been routinely testing since the beginning of the school year, but 17,000 eligible children remain unvaccinated. Police are pleading with Tasmanians to take care around water following two separate incidents yesterday which saw a man die and a young child rescued. In Research Bay, a 35-year-old diver was located unconscious underwater and was unable to be revived. Meanwhile, a 10-year-old was pulled from the Derwent River at Plenty after experiencing swimming difficulty, prompting a message from water authorities. We just have to be so conscious about uh, children in water. We have to you know, make sure you know, that we, we risk assess, we look at what to, where they're going in and so on, and more importantly, keep an eye on them. It takes 20 seconds for a, ch ch a child to get into trouble and indeed drown. Anyone with information regarding the Research Bay incident is being asked to contact Crime Stoppers. The disastrous state of the Tasmanian rental market has been exposed in new data with the north and northwest hit hardest. Rochalie, Ravenswood, St Helens, Shawwell Park and East Devonport have been named as the suburbs most desperate for more housing stock with a rental vacancy rate of zero. The housing crisis is putting an enormous amount of stress on renters. Uh, many feel that they've got no choice but to accept unreasonable rent increases because of the risk of eviction. The Tenants' Union says rental rise caps and regulation of short-stay accommodation need to be strongly considered as solutions. 
The peak body for business in Tasmania has thrown its support behind the university's controversial Hobart City move. The Tasmanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry says a similar move in Launceston from Newnham to Inveresk has been positive and shows potential benefits for business. There are some that are worried about it, but what I know is that good businesses always find a way. And I would think that having thousands of people on the doorstep of your business is a really good opportunity. The touted move into the city has drawn opposition from some CBD traders, while a Facebook group calling for the plan to be halted has gained nearly 2,000 members. Fed up with facilities they say are falling apart, sporting groups in the West Tamar have unveiled a new plan for the Exeter Oval. The group says they're in danger of losing their best athletes and is now calling for more than $2 million to make their dreams a reality. The next generation of footy stars at the Tamer Demons are kicking goals. But off the field, it's a different story. I think there's one change room where you've got to hold the door shut with a piece of wood. The 70-year-old rooms are falling apart and with the club growing from 90 to 135 players in the last three years, they're also too small. The under 14 girls um, utilise a change room because of course they come from school in their uniforms and they need to get changed to train. Um, most of the boys usually um, strip down in the barbecue area at the back there. The cricket and footy club's proud histories are front and centre, but they're out of place. Paint chips and peels on every wall. Tiny change rooms are separated by temporary walls. The kitchen's in disrepair and it's right next to the only set of showers. The ground is owned by the Exeter Show Society. Users gathered today to unveil an ambitious plan for the future. Replacing the existing pavilion with a large open area, which is undercover but open, which will allow perfect viewing of uh, both the footy ground and the cricket ground. It's going to be a huge asset um, that will future-proof the needs of the growing sport communities in, in this part of the municipality. The state government has committed $700,000. The plan's backers are hoping to secure the rest of the $3 million from the federal government with an election looming and say it's a worthy spend for the West Tamer community. To develop the community, we need our young people playing sport in the community, not travelling to Launceston to do it. But they can't play here if we don't have the right facilities. Looking to score an upgrade. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A pea plater was among 18 alleged drink drivers nabbed in a long weekend crackdown by police in Launceston. One driver returned a reading of 0.251, more than five times the legal limit. Eleven people tested positive for drugs, while two Hoon drivers were also arrested in the road safety operation. Authorities say there is no excuse for drink or drug driving. Football Tasmania has opened its wallet to support the state's Ukrainian community. The governing body donating the gate money from today's Summer Cup final to the local Ukrainian association. The group is raising funds to assist those fleeing the conflict. We uh, are supporting the community at the moment by welcoming new arrivals who come as displaced persons from, the, from um, what's happening in Ukraine. Just off the back of obviously what's being widely reported in the media and the, and the tragedy of what is unfolding in Ukraine, uh, we just thought it was an opportunity for us to do our bit. The association also thanking Tasmanians who have already contributed to their cause. Well, having somewhere to stay and be supported can make all the difference for young children battling severe illness and their families. The work of Ronald McDonald House does just that, but more funding is needed and we're being asked to jump on our bikes to help raise it. When little Archie's midwife noticed something was wrong, parents Kiara and Dan rushed him to hospital. Medical staff determined he'd suffered a stroke. It's been an absolute blur of a ride, to be honest. I think we were in survival mode there for the first four weeks we were down here, so... The Charles family has spent the past 10 weeks at Hobart's Ronald McDonald House, able to sleep by the hospital and keep Archie close to medical help. It's kept their family together through incredibly testing times. Probably would have been at the point where we'd probably had to separate and re reassess yeah. our finances, one of us have to go back to work sort of thing. Like yeah. It just, yeah, it would have been an absolute strain. The charity's work is priceless, but the houses don't receive government funding. The wheels are now turning on its major fundraiser, the ride for sick kids. Cyclists are being called upon to sign up online and take a virtual ride. Which means that you can ride from anywhere in the country, indoor, outdoor, and raise funds that go towards the Ronald McDonald houses. 
In 12 years, nearly $3 million has been raised, paying for 15,000 nights of accommodation. The charity's fundraising has taken a hit through the pandemic, making events like these all the more important. It's extremely vital, you know, you put yourself in the situation of a family that, um, you know, goes to the doctor, child's just been feeling unwell for a, a little bit, and then all of a sudden they're told, you know, this, this could be more serious. Thankful, like, if they, I don't know if they realise just how much their money gets us, like, here. Supporters can donate and sign up on the Ride for Sick Kids website. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Hall of Fame team of Tasmanian footballers has reunited 65 years after an underdog victory gave them legend status. The Longford Tigers made history in 1957 when they conquered North Hobart to become state premiers. It added two NTFA premierships in 55, 57 and 58. A number of surviving players present as the side was honoured alongside four other Longford legends. It's a shame there's not more of that, but many of them are not with us anymore. I've played team sports all my life and that was one that you'll never forget. <laughs> The Longford Legends Walk aims to pay tribute to individuals who've made major contributions to the region. It's now cheaper to fly from Tasmania to some interstate destinations than to fill up your car with a tank of petrol. New Virgin Airfares selling for as little as $55 to Melbourne from Launceston and Hobart. The sale dropped today for more than 750,000 seats as the state's airports continue to bounce back after border closures. Shane Warne would have been watching down with joy as Tasmanian leg spinner Maisie Gibson spun through the New South Wales top order in its one-day clash. She claimed three quick wickets, including the prize scalp of Aaron Burns, as visitors slumped to five for 60. But New South Wales forged a comeback and is currently edging towards 200. Tasmania's NPL soccer season has officially been launched ahead of this weekend's opening round. After losing the title in dramatic circumstances on the final day of the season last year, the Devonport strikers are looking for redemption. They all want it, but come September 10th, only one of these teams will get their hands on the trophy. After a long summer, Tasmania's Premier Football League is ready to kick off. It'll be good to, to get the ground running this year. You know, everyone's picked up some pretty good players, so it'll be it'll be good to see where we fare. Clubs are really looking forward to the season, and I think you know it promises to be a really exciting year. Last year was a thriller, with Glenorchy stealing the title off Devonport in the last round. The strikers looking to bounce back after that heartache, confident they have the depth to challenge. We've always struggled to go outside though probably 12 or 13 players and, th and this year we've probably got a full squad of 20 that can come into the starting 11. Glenorchy also strengthening their title winning squad, highlighted by the signature of rising star Kyle Vincent. Now the hunted, the Knights are looking for more of the same. I think if we just stick to our guns and stick to the way that Shermo wants us to play, as we did last year, we'll, we'll be just fine. After an up and down 2021, consistency is Kingborough's focus in 2022. We had a couple of poor results that really hurt us um, going into the back half, but if we can keep consistent throughout there all the year, I don't think see why we shouldn't um, come close to the top two. While for Launceston City, they're looking to build on their youth. Many players we had, they were pretty young to start with and they have a, a experience now. The season begins Friday night. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. South Hobart has finished its pre-season on a high, winning both the men's and women's Summer Cups this afternoon. In less than summary conditions at Darcy, Darcy Street, a single goal was enough for the men to overcome. Okay, as Morton rolls it through for Van Dorn! Isky Van Dorn puts South Hobart ahead in the Cup Final. The women's side defeated Clarence 3-1. Clarence opened the scoring the 16th minute before South levelled in the 31st. Two quick goals after half-time sealing the result for the Reds. A Tasmanian teenager has stolen the limelight at one of wakeboarding's most high-profile events. Abby Guinan took out the junior girls' title at Melbourne's Moomba Masters, edging out some of the country's best. The Derwin local overcame a wipeout in the final before pulling out all the tricks to claim victory. The 16-year-old says she'll be straight back into training ahead of the upcoming state and national titles. 
Good evening. Flinders Island ahead of the pack today with 26 degrees. Hobart 18, Launceston and Burnie 23 and Devonport 21. Strawn 25, King Island and Smithton 24 with low head on 23. St Helens and Friendly Beaches recorded 20, Ooze 19 and Grove 17. Cloudy conditions for the majority of the state. A few showers over the southeast and a thunderstorm over the central north in the afternoon. Mount Barrow 31 millimetres. Convective cloud with embedded thunderstorms over inland New South Wales and Victoria as well as parts of the far north. South Australia and the southern tip of WA. Tomorrow, the high to our south directs the east nor'easterly flow over us, along with the ridge up over the eastern states, troughs and lows over the Tasman Sea and southern WA. Winds tomorrow up to 15 to 25 knots, reaching 30 knots over the south and northwest. Strong wind warning between Tasman Island and Stanley has been issued, and we have that severe thunderstorm warning for areas between Fingal across to Sheffield and also in the northeast uh, of Strawn around the Zeean area. The forecast for tomorrow. Hobart, showery and 22. 21 for Adventure Bay. Taralea, a shower or two and 25. Launceston, a top of 25 with a shower or two. 23 for Devonport. Cloudy for Bridport, 24 the maximum. Burnie expecting 22 with a shower. Morning shower for Strawn, 26 the high. 24 for Marawar. St Helens, a high tomorrow of 22. A humid day. Showers there. Same for Swansea, 21 the top and 23 for Whitemark. UV, that's peaking at 7 and in the high range. A little humidity on Wednesday with a few more showers. Strawn just partly cloudy and 25. Looks like Flinders Island will miss the showers that most others will see on Thursday. And on Friday, conditions clearing a little. Morning showers over the east and south continuing over the southwest. Partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow. 27, a humid 32 in Adelaide, a possible shower in Melbourne, probable shower for Sydney. 28 and partly cloudy in Brisbane. Cloudy and cooling down to 15 in Hobart at the moment, 19 in Launceston and in Devonport. Kim, some unsettled weather heading our way over the next few days, some wet weather for few of us right through until Friday. Okay, thanks very much, Merv.